Right, good morning everybody and welcome to the uh, early morning warm-up. Uh, this is session number 12 and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, rhythms today. Um, but that doesn't mean to say that you need to play a rhythmic instrument such as a drum or percussion. You can still use your regular instruments and um, you can play along to any of the rhythms. Uh, you can do single notes, you could play chords. Uh, you can even make up melodies. You don't have to stay on one note if you want to. Um, or you can even practice the scale to a particular rhythm and that's a perfectly good thing to do. Um, or you can sing at the same time or clap or bang an instrument, uh, percussion. If you really want to test yourself, tap your feet to the 4-4 beat at the same time as you're playing the rhythm on your instrument. And if that's not hard enough, um, clap and tap your feet and play the instrument all at the same time. Actually, that might be, that might be impossible, but uh, maybe if you're a singer. Um, so lots of different ways of uh, um, playing these rhythms. And um, so you, you can choose your own way, because of course, as you all know, you can't hear each other and I can't hear you either. But hopefully you can hear me. So what we'll do to start with, though, is just to actually get a bit of air into the instruments, um, get, get them warmed up a bit, the guitars as well. And I'll just grab my guitar and we'll do what we did last week, which was just to... I'm just going to plonk along uh, on a note. I'm going to concert C, and um, I'm just going to play this note at a regular 4 4 time. And it's just an opportunity for you to pluck away or strum away or blow your instrument just to get a bit of air into it and to warm it up. So, some long notes from the saxophones and trumpets, and uh, some uh, general playing from everybody else. So, here we go one, two, three, four. <laughs> Drives you nuts, just do a harmony note. Take a breath now and again if you're blowing an instrument. <laughs> started and we'll do one thing we'll do one scale and that will be the chromatic scale so we're just going to slowly go up from uh, we'll go from concert C and we're just going to go up one octave so D if you're on a B flat instrument and start on A if you're an E flat instrument and we're just going to slowly go up the chromatic scale so that's playing every semitone uh, all 12 semitones starting on the C uh, here we go one, two, three, four. Should have arrived at the same time together, hopefully. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four. One more time, one, two, three, four. And let's do a couple coming down. So starting on the high note now, coming down from concert C, uh, descending the chromatic scale. One, two, three, four. time one two three four okay well that's uh, just got things mildly warmed up so let's just put my guitar down um, for the rest of the session or until we start strumming some chords um, I'm just gonna be playing uh, these claves I'm going to be banging them 
and uh, hopefully the time will be kept by the um, internet. This is my excuse, you see. If it all goes a bit out of time, I'm going to blame the internet. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to be banging out the rhythms which are on the sheet, and then I'll put the sheet on the screen in a minute, and, um, and then you can play along to the rhythms, uh, but you can play them in your own way. So you can either just play a single note, or as I said earlier, play uh, a scale or a range of notes. Uh, so let me just find the um, rhythm. So it's a... Right, there we go. And I've named them. Now, uh, just a little bit of explanation here. I have given them sort of names. Uh, it's partly just so I can identify them. Um, for example, bar four says tango. Now, that isn't all of tango. Tango isn't just that one rhythm. It's just that one particular rhythm they may have used on certain occasions. Um, so I'm just using it as an identifier, really. I'm not a, a musicologist. I'm not going to explain the history behind any of these. I'm not going to pretend to even know them. Uh, but you can always look it up on uh, things like Wikipedia, and you get some good explanations of where these rhythms come from. Um, so we're just going to start off with one which is called the Charleston, and it's a little bit similar to the rhythm that they used to dance to in the 1920s. Um, just a little, and one more point for um, jazzers amongst you. I know there's quite a few that play jazz music. Uh, I'm not going to be swinging any of the quavers. We're all going to play it straight. So it'll be all one and two and three and four and just regular straight quavers, not the swung one and two and three and four approach. So I'm going to do my best to play them straight anyway. And I will be putting a metronome on at varying speeds so that you can um, play them easily to start with and push up the speed a little bit. So let's just get started uh, with this thing called the Charleston. Um, there's just two beats in it. So we're just looking at bar one. So the metronome is going to be going four to the bar. And I'm going to click that little rhythm and you join in. Uh, so it doesn't matter if you don't read music, just uh, follow the rhythm. And uh, here we go. One, two, three, four. One more. Good. Okay, uh, we're now going to play it a little bit faster. That, that was actually at 80 beats a minute. So I'm going to knock it up quite a bit to 120. Um, and now we're going to play it at a much more reasonable speed. Um, here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. Okay, well, that's the Charleston, and that's probably the simplest rhythm on here in terms of, well, it's only two beats, two actual uh, hits. So let's move on to the Tresolo, the next one. And uh, if, you've, um, if you look at it closely, you'll notice it's actually the Charleston plus one more beat on the end. And um, so this is a three uh, beat, well, that's probably why it's called a Tresolo, uh, a three beat pattern. Uh, again, it'll be a very familiar sounding pattern when you hear it, and it's the basis of a huge amount of music. So um, let's um, play that. Let's go back to a slower speed to start with. Here we go after four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and 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 three.
One, two, and three, four. One, two, and three. One more. And stop. Okay, so just uh, recapping, we're on bar two, the trestolo. Let's do a quick version of that. Just for a minute. One, two, one, two, three, four. One more bar, one, two, and three, four. Good, Tretolo, uh, it's a basis of an awful lot of rhythms, which I think you'll recognize if you look at the patterns later on. Uh, let's move on to bar three now, and this is like a, a more sophisticated version of the Tretolo, it's called the Habanera. Uh, it's also called lots of other things. I think it's used in tango and all sorts of other rhythms as well. And um, again, it's like the last one plus an extra beat. There is an extra beat in there which will make uh, the Treslo into the Habanera. It's also the rhythm used at the beginning of the tune, uh, Habanera by, um, from Carmen's Bizet. You'll recognize the rhythm again when you hear it. Uh, okay, let's go back to a slower speed and do the Habanera. I haven't seen anyone get up and dance yet, but uh, <laughs> here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. Uh, One more bar, dun, 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 and stop. Um, bass players, um, you can play a rhythm here where it goes root, fifth octave, fifth root, fifth octave, fifth root, and you'll recognize that rhythm from all sorts of dance music. Uh, I'm gonna do a fast version of that quickly. Uh, so here we go, da, 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 da. this will sound a bit more like Carmen's bees, eh? One, two, three, ba, 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 dum, bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. And stop. Uh, the Habanera. Okay, moving on to the tango. What I've called the tango. It's not the tango. It's, it's a rhythm. A rhythm used in tango. And this is the five bar pattern. And it takes the previous one and just inserts a note on the uh, and after one to make the fifth. So each of these, if you look, they're each just adding one note to the rhythm to build up to this uh, five note rhythm. So, um, okay, let's just do that uh, bar four. Three, four.
Last one. Here we go. Last bomb. 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 Um, yeah, I think that one's all right at that speed, so we won't do a fast one. Let's move on to what uh, is called the 3 2 Cuban Son Clave. Um, now, this is, uh, this is a, a two bar phrase, so we're into the region of two bar phrases now. Um, this is a two bar phrase, a rhythmic phrase, which is used a lot in salsa music, uh, Cuban music, particularly Cuban Son, but it's also, um, you, you do also hear it in pop music, it's the basis of the Bo Diddley riff, the Rolling Stones used it in one of their songs and so on. So um, again, a very uh, common rhythm and it's called 3-2 simply because there are three beats in the first bar and two in the second bar. Now, uh, the observant amongst you will notice that the first bar is simply the tresillo, which we've already done. So we're just going to do the second bar. This is bar six on the sheets. And I'm just going to uh, do the second bar only. Looks simple, but can still catch you out. Here we go. Bar six. One, two, three, four. Two, three. Two, three. Two, three, four, one. Is there any on beats two and three? Two, three, four. I'm not. <laughs> I'll stop there. Um, that teaches me to try and speak and uh, play at the same time. Um, so that's bar six, which is beats two and three. Let's put the two together now to play the whole three, two Cuban son clave. And you, there are records where you can hear this being played all the way through from start to finish. Uh, there are lots of rhythm songs which use it, but you don't actually hear it as well. So, so we're on the three, two Cuban son clave, two bars repeated, bars five and six. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three. One more time. Now, okay, that's the 3-2 uh, Cuban son clave. Clave actually means key. So it's the key, it's the rhythm, it's the rhythmic key, it's the key to the song. Uh, not the same use of the word key as in C major, but uh, clave is the key. Uh, we're gonna move on now to the, its neighbor, two, the 2-3 two, Cuban son clave, which is bars seven and eight on the sheet. And uh, this is literally the same thing, but the two bars are reversed. So you start with the second bar and then play the first bar. Um, so you end up playing the same pattern overall, but it's starting on that uh, beats two and three, the, the first bar is shown there. So we're just gonna play bar seven and eight as a loop. Uh, do it a little bit faster because it is kind of the same pattern as the last one. So here's the two, three Cuban son clave. One, two, three, four. Two, three. One, two, three. Two, three, four, one, two, and three, four, one, two, three. One more time, two, three, four, ba, ba, ba. 
Excellent. Right. That's the two, three Cuban son clave. And uh, now let's move on to the rumba clave. Um, and the only difference between the Cuban son and the rumba is that the third beat is uh, one um, quaver later, a quaver beat later. So it's just slight delay on the uh, third beat. By the way, you might be thinking where do all these rhythms come from? And you might think the answer is Latin America. Um, actually, they all come from Africa. And uh, yes, Latin America has made the most of these rhythms and adapted them to their own music. And that's where we tend to hear it. But all these rhythms are essentially African rhythms, which uh, went over to Latin America during the slave trade uh, and eventually came out into the wider realm. But um, so Africa is a source of just about everything on this sheet. Uh, okay, let's just do the um, rumba clave now and um, a little bit slower. So just a third beat is uh, an eighth note later. One, two, one, two, three, four. One more time. Uh, the rumba clave there. Um, okay, good. We're moving swiftly on. We've only got uh, six or seven minutes to go and we've got a bit of strumming to do as well. So we're just going to um, not play the two, three, the reverse rumba, because it is literally the two bars swapped around. We'll go on to the bossa nova clave now. Um, and this is a rhythm, you will hear this on records from the old Bossa Nova era, such as by Stan Getz and so on. And um, you will hear the drummer actually playing this on a, a side stick. And it's uh, very similar to the Cuban son clave, except that the uh, last beat, the fifth beat, is delayed by a, a, a quaver. So straight in with the Bossa Nova clave. Again, it's the trezolo for the first bar. Here we go. Bossa Nova Clave, bars 13 and 14. One, two, one, two, three, four. Last time. Uh, the bossa nova clave. Uh, there we go. Uh, the, there's a rhythm on the right there called boogaloo. Uh, actually, I've <laughs> called it something else, but it's supposed to say boogaloo. And it's uh, a reverse version of the bossa nova clave. And it's, um, we're not going to do that one because of time, but uh, something you can always practice. It's just the reverse bossa. It's often swung as well. And it's used in tunes like the um, the Sidewinder and music from that era of uh, jazz music. So sort of 60s boogaloo is where you'll hear that pattern played. We're just going to move on now to some um, fairly generic sort of patterns just to finish off. Um, let's just do a couple of these. Uh, the cowbell pattern number one, nice and easy. Nothing syncopated particularly. 
Uh, it's just a rhythm that's played on the cowbell, surprisingly. Here we go. Okay. So we're doing bars 17 and 18. And you can always play a scale up. You can go up the, use the rhythm to play up and down a scale, for example. One, two, one, two, three, four. Last time, coming up. One, two, three, four, and. Interesting thing about a lot of these patterns is on their own, they might seem fairly simple and, well, not simple to play always, but fairly mundane, but um, you put them together, get one person playing one rhythm, one person playing another, and then it starts to sound very interesting when those rhythms all lock together. Uh, for example, that Tim Barley pattern underneath perhaps at the same time as a cowbell, and you'll get some interesting sort of tension and release going on, which is what a lot of this is about. Tension in one part of the, one bar of the rhythm, followed by um, release in the other. Let's just finish off now with the partido alto rhythm, uh, which is the last one, and it's bars 23 and 24. This rhythm is actually played by guitarists quite a lot when they're playing on samba records. And um, it's got an offbeat section in the middle of the two bars and on beats at either end. And that gives it the tension and release. So you've got the tension in the middle where it's syncopated, offbeat, and then it's released when it lands back on the beat at the end. And you get this constant sort of pushing and shoving going on in the rhythm. Not an easy one to play, but um, let's just finish off with that. And then we'll do a bit of strumming, some chords. So let's just slow it down a little bit. One, two, three, four. So it's one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, three, four. Last time, ba, 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 ba. Yes, well, it seems a shame to um, stop that one already because uh, they are good fun playing these rhythms. We'll do some more another time. Um, but that's it for the rhythmic side of it. I hope you're nice and warm. We're just gonna, I'm just going to put the chords up now for the um, strumming session. Now, this is for guitarists to strum and piano players, but the rest of you to, um, I'll strum the chords as well, a rest of you to play um, chord tones or uh, improvise over if you want, or just play little melodies based on these chords. So um, we've got four bars of uh, C, C, C minor and F, then four bars B flat, B flat, B flat minor, E flat, should all be on the screen in front of you. Then a couple of bars of A flat and G before it all starts again. So just take your, your um, instrument and play along in whatever fashion you like. So here we go. I'm going to be strumming the partito alto. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> B flat. 
top three, four. Back to top last time. on the tonic there we go well some interesting stuff in there and i enjoyed uh, playing some of those rhythms it's a pity to uh, cut it short but uh, as i say we'll do that again sometime with some new rhythms um but i hope you found that uh uh well most importantly uh helped you warm up uh but also interesting as well playing all those different rhythms if you'd like to um uh I think I've said everything I need to say. Uh, we'll be back next week as always. Just press your um, space bar if you want to say anything or just say goodbye. Um, I find that easiest actually just uh, by pressing the space bar it unmutes you and then you don't forget to mute yourself afterwards. So uh, anyway, so that's all from me. Thank you very much yeah. everybody. Thank you, David. Thank you. 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 Thank you.